promise you that by the end of this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding of objects in Java. I will also introduce an effective memory strategy to enhance your learning experience. Hi, I am Mujib. I'm a self-taught software engineer and former instructor. I know how to learn and teach effectively, and I'm dedicated to sharing my techniques and experience with aspiring developers like yourself. I was in your shoes not a long ago, and I want to reassure you that you are fully capable of becoming a rock star developer. Let's get started. To take this tutorial, you will need the following basic understanding of Java and programming, preferred code editor, and focus which is the first step, let's do this. We're going to fully grasp objects in Java. Objects are key to understanding object-oriented programming or OOP. Look around right now and you will find many examples of real world objects. Your desk, your phone, your car, and so on. In software, objects are conceptually similar to real-world objects. They too consist of state and related behavior. In software, an object is an instance of a class that encapsulates common data and behavior. Consider a car class as a blueprint for creating different car objects. Just as in the real world, each car has its unique attributes like color, model, brand, and so on, which can be represented as the variables of the car class. Um, these variables define the characteristics of each um, car object created from the blueprint. Moreover, a car can perform various actions such as start, stop, accelerate and so on which are akin to the methods defined within the car class. Um, these methods encapsulate the behavior or actions that a particular car can undertake. Uh, now imagine you create multiple instances um, of the car class each representing a specific car you can see how each individual car object can possess its unique um, uh, properties and perform its specific actions independently. Ready to see a real example? All right, let's get to it. So here I have created an empty project with a main class and a main method to uh, test our code. Let's go ahead and start by creating our car blueprint or car class to create a class in java right click on the desired package select new java class give it a name and press enter make sure you select class over here or you could use the shortcut in mac it is control plus option plus n select java class press enter give it na a name car.java press enter all right if you remember, we had two properties or member variables in our car class in the diagram. Let's start by adding those. So type string color and type string model. All right. So before we start adding our methods or actions, next, let's go ahead and test this class. Welcome back. All right, let's start by heading out to our main class and start creating instances of this car class. In other words, create, let's start creating objects uh, from this uh, car class. So we're going to create a type of car. So the type will be car. Let's name it car1 equals to new car. So whenever we would like to create an instance of a class in Java, we use the new keyword and then we call or invoke its constructor. Constructor is a special method in Java that has the same name as the, as the class itself. Uh, if you're curious that how come this constructor is available um, while we don't have any methods or functions inside of this car class. Uh, that is because if you don't provide one uh, under the hood, Java provides us a contractor called noargs contractor, 
uh, no args because it does not receive any arguments. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, you could think of a, an object as a container that holds or encapsulates data and behavior. So now if we refer to this um, container or object, like car one, and then use the dot notation, this is called dot notation, um, you will have access to its member, which are public. Um, if you'd like to know more about the new keyword constructors and also this keyword, the public keywords in private, those are called access modifiers, please let me know down in the comments. All right, let's move on. So currently we have inside of this class two member variables or properties which have no value. They're not assigned a value and if we try to access one of them they will not contain anything which uh, means it will log to the console if we try to log it uh, no so let's go ahead and try that oops system dot out dot print land line car one dot let's print out the color um we uh, if to run this program you could click on the play button and then run click run main dot main it will run the program for us or you could use the shortcut which is control plus r and mac you will see it is not because we never assign a, a value to this member of um, the car one object all right so let's start um, initializing those uh, member variables um, to initialize we all um, again refer to the object itself or the container and then use the dot notation to access any of its member available to us and then assign it a value like color silver. And then if we rerun this program, we'll see now the color member variable contains the silver color. And we could initialize the other member variable like model, oops, uh, equals to like, for example, Highlander. If we run this program again, or if we log um, it's out uh, car one dot model and rerun this program, we'll see Highlander. And we could create as many we would need to. Let's go ahead and do that. So type of car let's do car2 equals to new car car2 dot color equals to I don't know maybe red and car2 dot model equals to I don't know whatever let's say Nissan oops if I could spell it right and then if we system that out to print line car uh, two dot color this time. Let's just do the color on this one. We will see it is red. Um, if you remember earlier, we said um, or I said that each object will have uh, will be unique, and that's what I mean by unique. That this object has its own um, same properties or member variables, but it has its own values, and this car two has its own values. But this way of initializing those member variables is very tedious. Um, imagine if you had a bunch of member variables, you would have to do uh, for each one of those objects um, and for each member variable the same. Another cleaner way and better way to do this is via constructors. So let's provide our own constructor our custom contractor for for the car class so car uh, let's receive some parameters for color our member variable color type is string so let's receive a string type color and string type model and let's assign those parameters to our member variables uh, since the names of those parameters and the member variables are the same 
to differentiate between those two we would need to use the this keyword and then dot color equals to the color that we receive through the parameter um, this refers to um, as I said if you need uh, more clarification on this uh, please let me know in the comments but this refers to the object currently being um, instantiated so this object um, um, that this keyword refers to this object currently being instantiated so let's go ahead and assign the model to this the model equals to the model that is being received from the parameter and now we have uh, two errors and those are coming from right here and here since we are providing our own custom constructor now java does not provide or provide us anymore the no rx constructor so we have to pass those parameters because we're saying we're going to receive those two and the order here matters so we have to pass the color first and then the model so let's go ahead and pass those values instead of manually setting um, those to our member variables so for the first one let's pass silver and highlander now the error went away so and you can see those gray ones uh, telling you or reminding you of the order which one is expecting um, expected to be um, uh, in the first position and which one is expected to be in the second position so let's go ahead and do the same for this one let's pass for this the red and then nissan all right the errors are gone since we are initializing initializing our member variables we no longer need those um, manually setting them so let's get rid of those and those those are very ugly and tedious and let's run this program again let's see what we get so we still get silver highlander and red all right that was all about constructors a little bit about this keyword um, all right let's go ahead and add next add our uh, methods so we could use over here one thing I forgot is we could use the public keyword here but if you don't add public by default it will be public and the contractor does not return anything so you don't give this a return type at all but this method um, if you remember in diagram we had two methods uh, start and stop um, let's make them simple let's just log out a message to the console so we don't want to return anything so void um, start parentheses we don't want to receive any parameters let's just log out a, mess a message to the console uh, let's just say starting and then for the next one uh, void stop let's log out to the console um, stopping save all right now let's go ahead head back to our main class and test those uh, methods on both classes um, car one dot uh, start let's start it and let's go ahead and start our oops car two now what is going on let's start our car two so car two dot start and let's run this program one more time so we see for the first one the first one is starting and the second one is starting and the color is red to um, show you one more time that each object is unique um, let's go ahead and add for um, Uh, let's add over here something like this let's access this dot uh, model and concatenate it oops if I could spell it right 
with the starting portion and let's add a space here so it doesn't um, stick to the model so we can differentiate which um, start method is being called on which object so let's go ahead and rerun this program one more time we see silver highlander highlander is starting and nissan is starting nissan color is red all right that is all about classes and objects in java um, and there are a lot more about classes in java uh, classes and um, objects if you'd like to know more please uh, let me know down in the comments all right now it is time for the cool memory strategy i mentioned in the beginning of this video recalling the information from memory suggested in a famous book a mind for numbers by dr barbara oakley at the end of every chapter of a book but in this case a tutorial look away and try to remember the list of items you learned and don't worry if the number is zero you will get better with practice. The point here is to train your mind and develop a habit of retaining the key parts of every information you receive. Now pause the video, recall your takeaways from this tutorial and come back to see my takeaways. The main takeaways from this tutorial. Objects in programming represent real world objects like cars, books and so on. A class is like a blueprint that defines how an object should look like. Objects has attributes and behavior. Java provides us a no args constructor if a class doesn't have one. We use the new keyword to create instance of a class. Hope you liked it. I also want to make sure that I talk about concepts that really interest you. So please let me know in the comments what else you would like to learn through my examples. See ya.